So, okay, after that very nice talk, we are now on to the business part of today to find out who the winners are. Now, before we start to go through the awards, I'd like to invite up on stage the core jury, first of all, to come up on stage here right now, if that's possible. Can I just get you all to come up here, maybe in a line? Just about there. Yeah, that's perfect. So this is the uh, core jury. This is the uh, team who have, in, in, in conjunction with another group who will be introduced by Rogier, have been involved in the decisions being made today. So I suppose what I'd like to do, first of all, is to introduce the chair of the core jury, and that is Rogier Hopstocken. Have a fantastic event. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the next thing is, I want to show it to me. Please show it to me. <laughs> so we start on the left side. Do like that, okay? <laughs> okay. And again. Yay! Okay. Sorry for that. You just create memory. Back, you're just back in my memories. role, uh, um, I'm honored to uh, to chair the uh, jury, consisting of wonderful people and two groups actually. That is the group with these guys, and it's a bit too long to mention all their names, but have have a close look because they did a great uh, uh, job to decide on several awards. And then we have this core jury, consisting of Robert Verbund. Maxima Medical Center and is a cardiologist. Then we have uh, Minister Jongepier uh, from the Patient Association. We have Mark van Roosmalen from Philips. We have, uh, and now I forget your name. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, Simone van Beek, of course, nurse practitioner, Maxima Medical Center. And David Bos, uh, David Bos uh, from Saltro Diagnostic Center in the Netherlands. One. And bef uh, before getting to this uh, enormous, exciting moment, uh, I just want to say, and that's a cliche, but it's absolutely true, you achieved a lot. So I would really like to thank the students for the achievements and for showing it with such a, uh, a lot of smiles today and yesterday. Thank you for that, because it was great to experience that, and it's really a hope for the future. So, applause for yourself. <laughs> and I just want to mention uh, one university, because when the event started yesterday, the testing event, they were not there. But suddenly, they came out of the sky and started testing, and they came out of Cairo. And uh, I heard a lot of the struggles they had to go through to get here anyway. So uh, 24 hours before they were here, they didn't even know they could reach Europe. So it was amazing to see them testing with their smiling faces. And uh, it's really uh, a hope that you will continue keeping on the good job. So thank you for that. And I hand over the mic back to Barry, and we come to the different awards. Thank you very much for the very kind words. What I'm going to ask, if I could get you to go back with the jury, it would be fantastic. I'm going to just ask very, two very short questions to the jury as they are here in front of me. Um, how hard was this whole decision process for you? Does anyone want to comment on that very briefly? You can uh, I haven't slept uh, this night. Last <laughs> night. <laughs> Um, um, and w anybody else want to reflect on the ingenuity that has been displayed by some of these teams in the, some of the sensors that they've developed? It was really amazing. It was really like uh, seeing the groups with uh, all those crazy ideas, um, building stuff and really showing that it's working. And that was, was really good to see. It's nice. Excellent. Fantastic. 
Okay, so let's get on to the uh, most important aspect of today. Um, I suppose for many people is to find out who has won some of the prizes. So there are four prizes. Uh, the first prize is the analytical performance. The second prize is the creativity award. The third prize is translation potential. And the fourth prize is the public inspiration award. And we're going to start off, first of all, with the analytical performance award. And to announce the two prize winners for this, that is first place and second place, we'll ask uh, David Boss from the core jury to make the announcement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the, uh, the, the, the organizing committee for having me here. It's been two wonderful days. I can only echo what Rogier just said. I've seen a lot of talent, a lot of hard work, a lot of creativity today and yesterday. So, uh, so thank you, and thank you all for, uh, for your great job you've been doing uh, the last two days. It was really wonderful to see. Um, so I will directly move over to the formal part uh, for two reasons. First of all, uh, a little bit of time restraints, I think. And second of all, um, I don't like to be in the spotlights for too long myself. <laughs> <coughs> so, Spotlight's right there, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so, I'll move over. Um, well, so let's, let's, let's move on. Um, as said before, two prizes. There's a second place and there's a first place. So the winner. And of course, I will start with the winner. Oh, no. no. I will start with the second place. I'm very bad at doing things like this. Um, is the gold one or the... Uh... Silver, <laughs> silver, silver, yeah, yeah. So the second place, then. Um, analytical performance, where have, we, where have we been looking at, of course... Uh, several aspects, sample volume, the, the, the small volume is often better than a large volume, uh, time to, uh, of, uh, of the analyst, uh, uh, analytics, so faster is the better, but of course, uh, above all, uh, you have to, 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 do, to do well in, in, in estimating the sample uh, concentration. So correlation plots were very important, we've been looking at that, and um, we made a first and a second place, Now we'll start with the second, uh, with the second place. Open the envelope. Is there a drum or something like that? Is there... We can do that. There you go. <laughs> Second place, University of Leuven. So if the uh, university team would like to come up on stage. Yeah. Would the... The team from the University of Leuven like to come up on stage to receive their second place award in the analytical performance. Enter the stage and just look at the photographer right here, this man right here, everybody into the center. So if anyone's come up for awards, into the center, photographer sitting right here. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. The winners, when it comes to analytical performance, they simply have the best correlation uh, plot, um, and many data points, and even the smallest volume needed to do the an analytics. So, um, I slept actually pretty good last night. <laughs> the winner is Eindhoven. Does anybody want to receive the award? <laughs> and there's the camera. And so very, very, very quickly, does anyone want to comment on, on, on the award? Anybody here? Want to say something about what you feel? They've nominated this man here is going to say a couple of words. Paul, um, what do you think? 
Well, it was actually it was a wonderful year. Uh, I had a privilege to work with all these people, uh, and uh, yeah, we also want to thank uh, Leo Eisendorn and <laughs> Max Schepers. Is he also in the room here? Max Schepers, is he also here today? Yeah, yeah. Ah, up there. <laughs> they uh, they also invested a lot of time in us and uh, gave us wonderful feedback and uh, helped us out a lot. So uh, yeah. Thank all of you and uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. you can go this way again. Congratulations. So that's the first award of the night. The second award that we're going to give out next is the uh, Creativity Award. And to award the Creativity Award, we have Robert Verbunt from the Core Jury. Okay. Um, being a medical doctor, being a cardiologist, I believe that remote patient management is going to be very important in the next future to monitor and treat patients with chronic disease like heart failure. And biosensors are going to help us to do that very well. And maybe over 10 years they need us, they don't need us anymore, but for now, for the next 10 years, maybe we are still important. Um, the Creativity Award is for the team that used uh, novel techniques and uh, to be honest, uh, most of the jury here don't have a technical background. So we looked very closely at the voting of the university representatives. And I can tell you the results are very close, but we have a winner and a second place. The the second prize is for the team that used nanowires as sensors for measuring currents, and that is, I think, I think team already knows, maybe, <laughs> the, technical, sorry, the Technical University of Denmark. Group in, group in, group in a little bit. Let's get everyone together a little bit. There we go. <laughs> and the first prize is for the team that used a combination of magnetic beads and quantum dots And that's Uppsala University. Same thing I'm going to do with the last uh, award. Does anybody from the team want to comment on getting this creativity award as part of the event? I'm going to ask the, the person who pitched to say a couple of words. There we go. Okay, so thank you so much, first of all, the organization to organize this amazing event. Also, a lot of uh, thank you for our supervisors. Gemma, it's somewhere there. <laughs> thank you so much. Masood. Masood also for supervising. And also, thanks a lot to Uppsala University, who helped us with the facilities and a lot of feedback and advice for all the project. Thanks so much. The third award tonight, uh, today is on translation potential and to award 
the first and second prize in this category, we have Mark Van Rosemalen from the core jury. So thank you all for um, inviting me here all, so that we uh, can see all your challenges and how you build your systems. And it was really amazing to see how you could show even uh, measurable results and that you could see the potential of all the systems going to be on the market. And I yeah, even noted groups with simple solutions which were able to show some uh, good results and applicability to the market. So it was really nice to see. I really uh, was impressed by all your efforts. So for the, the prize, we have the second winner, which is... Um, The University of Leuven. Camera's right here, keep going, keep going, keep going, into the spotlight, don't be afraid of the spotlight, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Congratulations. And of course then we have a winner. Um, system almost complete and I would say really showing, yeah, this could be a measurement system for the end user, maybe at home, maybe in the hospital, we never know. But it was really, yeah, very good, well-designed final, uh, final system. So, to keep it short, Eindhoven University. <laughs> And you also know the drill already, you know where the phot photographer is. So I'm going to ask somebody as well to comment on this translation potential awards. Does anyone want to make? I won't ask you again because you've already said something. There you go. First of all, thank you very much for this award. We're very happy with it. And we couldn't have done it without all the people that we talked to, from patients to clinical nurses to cardiologists. They really gave us a lot of inspiration. And we really uh, came to a really nice end product. And for, to the rest, I would say, please come and talk to us afterwards because we're not done discussing this yet. Yeah. And we're on to the, uh, the final award, and that is the, uh, the Public Inspiration Award. And this, of course, was all voted for, for, for you and by also those who are watching at home or over the last couple of days online with Digital Census. And just to let you know about some of the statistics for Digital Census, they had, um, according to statistics, at around 3.30 today, just before we started this final session, there had been 3,000 visitors, which is very, very impressive. And of those 3,000 vis visitors, there were 1,500 votes um, cast for this particular award. Um, and from all around the, all around the world, we had, there were votes from Australia, from Mexico, from Tanzania. I particularly liked, because um, I'm, I'm big into football, and I spotted that there was a big blob in the middle of, just above Scotland, in between Iceland, which I assume is the Faroe Islands. Um, 
So uh, is there someone from the Faroe Islands on it? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that just shows you how global the, the voting went in terms of uh, the reach of this. And I think that's an extraordinary achievement for the competition and also for all of the teams and what they presented. So you should be very, very proud of yourselves. Now to present the Public Inspiration Award, I'm going to refer back to once more to the chair of the court jury, and that is Roger Hopstock. Creating added value at the point of care is what the public, all potential patients from the future or already, is waiting for. So um, I think this is a very important award and it's not only voted by you, but happily all, all around the world. So this makes it a very prestigious prize. It is important, more important than ever, I would say, uh, because I noticed that diagnostic companies are suffering with investing in these kind of developments. You are the future, you should do it, and just do it, please, for the society. So, the second prize winner of the Public Inspiration Award is... Danish Technical University. Congratulations. And then, first prize winner of the Public Inspiration Award 2017 is Technical University of Eindhoven. And the usual. So who's going to say something about the Public Inspiration Award and receiving it? Holy crap, it's there you go. <laughs> well, we almost thanked everyone, but I want to uh, thank our sponsors and especially at Dantec because she's here, uh, Nina, from all the way from Paris. So a really big thank you. Um, <laughs> but also, thank you for all your votes. We just have an amazing team, and I'm so glad I have to work a, a whole year together. We're yeah, it doesn't end there for us. Thank you all. Perfect. <laughs> Congratulations. So that's the, the end of the awards. So um, what we'd like to do now at the very moment is just to thank the core jury and the university representative jury. So I'd ask the university representative jury to join us on stage along with the core jury, please. And could I, ask, could I ask you all to make a long line and then step out, just step out a little bit out towards here so that everybody can see you, no hiding in the back. Um, 
and we make a nice line there of, every, of the entire jury. I'd like to maybe just take the opportunity, just get everyone to move on a little bit here. There we go, I think that's perfect. Everyone, no one is hanging off the end of the stage? No, it's all good. We just have a round of applause for the core jury and the university representative jury. So at, at this stage, the uh, census people would like to acknowledge you for your contribution and time that you've given towards the event by, uh, by giving you a little token of their appreciation for what you've done over the, last, over the last few days and, of course, for those who've been working with the teams over the last few months as well. Oh, it's, it's on the way. <laughs> it's on the way, he won't be left out. So ladies and gentlemen, the core jury and the university representative jury once more. I'll ask you all to go stage. Thank you. So we're almost at the conclusion, so I'd like to uh, invite once more Anna, the chair of the Organization of Census 2017, to come up on stage and to say a final few words. A round of applause for Anna, please. There you go. Thank you, Barry. So first of all, before you go down and you have a seat, I want to thank you for being our Masters of Ceremony today. No problem. So, but not only for that I want to thank you, but also as you have told us at the beginning of uh, today, you have helped us with a lot of other stuff and you have been a big support to Census over the past two years. So uh, I want to thank you for that and we also have a small present for you. So thank you. Thank very you. Much. Very thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, so before we all go out and have a nice drink, there are a few more things that I want to say. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the winning teams. You've done an amazing job, but also to the other teams because I think it is really important. It's really impressive what you have all shown here to us in the past weekend. And uh, I'm really looking forward to next year already to see what you have come up with then. So um, this event would not have been possible if it wasn't for the help of a few people. So first of all, I want to thank the staff from the auditorium for the sound and for the lighting, but also for helping us build up this event. And besides that, I also want to thank um, um, the Mute Zone and Open Webcast for shooting all the film material and for our live stream. And I wanted to thank Bas van Overbeke for making the beautiful pictures. So then we also had a few volunteers, because even though we are a big organization, we couldn't do any, everything ourselves this event. So can I also please get a hand for all the volunteers that have helped us today? So then another group of people uh, who have made this event possible is our partners. And these are all our partners, and I want to thank them for uh, supporting us throughout the year. And I want to ask some special uh, attention and thanks to Floristry, Brekelmans and Pieter Zwijne. So then, of course, there is one big group that I want to thank, and that is the entire organization. So could you please all come up on stage? Can I give them a big applause? <laughs> so this amazing organization of, at the moment, about 30 people, because this is also part of the organization for the Census 2018 event. And we have all worked very hard in the past year, and I am really proud to have been a part of this organization. 
Uh, and I think it was great to have been working with a group with such motivated and enthusiastic students. And I believe that we have made this event a success and that we really have taken census to the next level. So give them a hand. Okay, so then there is one more person that I would like to thank, and that is Menno Prins. <laughs> and, <laughs> so as you probably all know, Menno is the founder of Census, and he has also been our guide for the past two years, and he has been uh, an amazing help, and he's been so enthusiastic about this project, and uh, I just would, would like to get one more big applause for him. So uh, then, Manu, I want to ask you if you can share a small sneak preview of Census 2018 with us. Okay, first of all, now it's very clear to everybody that Census is a competition organized for students, by students. And, uh, well, it's been amazing to work with them for a whole year on realizing this, uh, the whole competition and this, the contest, including the contest of today. And uh, uh, I think they, uh, you as, as students, you, you live, you embody the, the spirit of census. The spirit of census is to challenge yourself, to try new things, to learn, to realize them, and to show it to the world. And that's what you have really, really have done. It's, I think it's amazing what we have seen, including today, and uh, I'm very proud of you. The mission of Census is to stimulate education and innovation in the field of biosensing worldwide. Therefore, I'm very happy to announce that uh, the Census will grow. This year, we, had, we have 10 teams sitting here. Next year, we'll have 13, and they will come from four continents. We'll have uh, the, 10 team, the 10 universities of uh, this year already. They will continue, but we will also have a team from Canada, a team from... Hey. <laughs> China, woo! <laughs> and the team from Spain, woo! <laughs> okay, now about the theme for next year. Uh, the theme of last year was kidney failure. The th theme of this year is heart failure. And the theme of next year finds its basis in a discovery by Paracelsus. So Paracelsus was a medicinal chemist from the Renaissance period, and he discovered that drug dose is crucial. If you want to treat a patient and you give the right dose, then the treatment is effective. But if you give too much, it can be toxic, can be harmful, or can even lead to death. And if you give too little, it's of no use. So the dose has to be right. And nowadays, we know that the drug level is not only Crucial, it's very personal. Can I have the next one? Yeah. Because we're all different, as Zaina already very clearly uh, explained. You and I are not the same. And also our condition, our health, fluctuates over time. So to have an effective treatment, we have to monitor the level of the drug. And there are, there are particular drugs which are very important. Antibiotics. They are among the, uh, the class of essential medicines, as explained, of, as listed by the World Health Organization. And the antibiotic that will be measured next year is vancomycin. It's a drug that's being used by millions of patients every year, and it's very potent. But it's also very difficult to dose, because if too much is given, it's really harmful for the patient. So the drug level has to be right. So therefore, the aim of next year, so the teams, they will develop biosensors, small, accurate, easy to use, rapid instruments for the measurement, the accurate measurement of vancomycin, this antibiotic, very close to the patient. 
to really help improve the effectiveness. And this is particularly important for patients in the intensive care because they all get these kind of antibiotics. So we are very lo much looking forward. I invite you all to become involved in Census 2018 and we look forward to a great competition next year. Thank you. Thank you, Menno, for sharing this exciting news with us. And before we head to uh, the drink, uh, the last thing I want to do is to thank all of you for being here today. I hope you had just as much fun as I had today because I had a great time. And uh, I'll see you at the drink where we can talk some more about Census 2018 and about the teams today. Thank you. <laughs>